base coat pearl white, leaf green, bright red transparent, moss green, burnt orange, black. Random splatter pattern. Those are the only colors we're going to need today to make the Potomac Punch. <laughs> shake up this pearl white. We're doing a three run on this one and uh, this is a subscriber requested pattern. This goes out to Kurt. Um, he's asked several times for this pattern. Um, I am a native Potomac fisherman. Grew up on the Potomac and the Susquehanna so very familiar with the Maryland waters. They're stained, they're muddy, they're dirty. They got some big bass in there, uh, especially when you can get them off of the grass post spawn. So we're going to start out today not doing a traditional full white. We're going to start out with the pearl white because we really don't need a whole lot. We want to keep this bait as transparent as possible. I'll just add a little bit more to this chamber here. You see I've got a flat side on here. I haven't figured out what to do with you yet. This is a reclaimed. Um, it is tank tested and ready to go and I have already scraped it down and taped it up so that's going to be the bonus bait for the spray session that's going to be two parts the first part is this Potomac punch goes out to Kurt Butts thanks for requesting it um, it is what is today I think it's December 22nd it's a Saturday and uh, pretty excited to be here in the shop I've got several orders to finish up this weekend and get them out. Uh, obviously not Christmas presents. Those have already, actually those ships have sailed. So we got all of our please make this for Christmas requests out. But these, these little bad boys are cool. Um, I would say that they're three season baits. They are going to mimic some of the, the, the minnows that are in there, but they're, they're going to give a dark enough of a profile to where you can use them over top of grass if you can find some clear water or um, muddy, shallow, uh, when, when the water has come up in the springtime. So that's when I like to use the bait. Hopefully that's when you guys are going to want to use it too. But it's a cool pattern. Um, just real simple to do. We just want to get the colors on right. We're going to have some reds on the bottom. We've already started with this pearl white. I'm going to heat set this off camera and then let's get started. I have got to actually let me take this out for now because we don't want to get any overspray on something that's not supposed to get the green on it because I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with this one. But the first color, I, I always work light to dark, but green, this transparent leaf green, is a little bit lighter than the red. Red is, once the red's on there, that's probably the last thing that we're going to put on this bait. But I'm going to cover this just real light in this, in this leaf green. I'm going to do that to all three. I'm going to leave a little bit out um, so it doesn't have to be a full cover, just a, a general cover and it can be a little random. Maybe just a little bit more in that back corner. Just run it out of the chamber. That's all you're pretty much going to need to do. I'm drinking out of this beautiful American Expeditions largemouth bass. Thanks, CJ. What a great Christmas present. Um, the bass has made it in. I don't know if you guys saw the last video or so that we shot, um, but that big old bass is here. I haven't painted it yet, um, and it's going to go... Let's see if I can put this coffee down for just a second. And uh, if you guys see this big red painting, that's been painted that way since I think 2005. It's just a random abstract. That's going to come down and get repainted. And the bass is going right there. So pretty stoked about that. That's going to be a different video, though. Let me grab a little bit of coffee here. Hopefully you guys are all ready for the holidays. We're going to work wet on wet, which is what I usually like to do. Make sure that's out of the chamber. The next thing that we're going to be doing is adding this 
burnt orange. It's a little bit darker of a brown. We want to get some burnt orange around the face, the head, and the back tip of the tail. You see, it looks darker in the bottle. And do a couple back here. And reload that. So basically what we're doing here, so we're doing the face and the head, and then both of the back sections of the tail here. We're not doing the underside though. We're going to leave that. That's going to end up being red. Uh, just in a couple of spots on the back and it's a it's a pretty effective pattern Had a good bit of success with the folks that have been testing it out there. No, I didn't take this bait with me Last time I was there, but I have I've had a couple of pro staff guys test it Since its inception with uh, some pretty good success So I think that's that's pretty consistent on all three. We've got face and cheeks, and the back sides are sitting here in this burnt orange. It's, it's a lighter brown, but the cool thing about the Wicked paints is that they have a little bit of gold glitter in some of these detail paints. So that's what we're going to be using for a lot of our browns in the next week or so, because I have a lot of browns in patterns for order. Again, we're moving pretty quick because this is a fairly simple bait to do. About three or four drops of moss green should do the, the trick. Clear that brown out of the chamber. Just one shot across the top of the back. And one shot across the top of the back. Repeat and repeat. And one shot across the top of the back. We now have green, 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 moss green, moss green, moss green, face and cheeks are our burnt orange and along the back side right there. Keeping the green in, just going to throw a little bit of that bright red, transparent. I'm going to pull the pressure back just a little bit now. So we're going to add this to four places. One on the top, flip it over, two, and on the throat. I like to think that the reds are bullseyes. It also mimics a little bit more of a wounded pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. I'm going to come back with just a hint of red at the eyes. Hint of red there. Hint of red there. Now, actually a little bit darker here. Now we're going to be ready for our black. I'm going to clear this chamber out. Actually, it's pretty cool. Um, but now we're going to clear this out. And then we're going to come back and do some splattering. And finish this bait up. We're coming back with just a little bit of black in the chamber. And we're going to try and hit just inside these eye sockets here. Very low pressure. Just want to accent those eyes a little bit. Same thing here. We're running light, light to dark, so black is going to be the last thing in this chamber. A 
last thing we have to do, I'm going to heat set this. I'm going to heat set it off camera so it's not loud and in your face. And then we're going to do a little bit of random splatter. I could take this off, and I know you guys are like, why don't you just take the top of this off and flick it? I, I just don't like the mess. Um, and I'm a, I'm a painter, so I prefer to use a good old flat brush, stiff bristle, and just flick the paint at it. So that's what we're going to do. I gave that a quick heat set. I'm going to add a little bit of black opaque into that. Keep these other colors out here so y'all can see them. That was pearlized and not an opaque white. Got the black in the cup. We've got the moss green out here. Um, I did put this back, but that is the burnt orange color. If you guys are going to be flicking paint all over the place, it's okay if you hit your bottles, but if you have other baits that are out that haven't been painted yet, I highly recommend you just come in with a crappy towel. I, I use these towels to clean out the chambers on the airbrush. Just kind of drape that over the back of the bait. I'm going to move my Bumbling Bass mug out as well. It's good coffee. Starbucks Morning Joe. Dark this morning. Really good. I always shoot these in the, in the morning. Sometimes I, I think I feel like I sound a little bit sleepy, but usually when the day gets started, I'm rolling through doing a, a bunch of runs on here. So we're just going to dip the, the very tip of this in. And then the other thing that I'll do is I'll bring my piece of scrap paper that I love to have handy. I'll flick the excess off. Because you don't, I don't know if you guys can see what's going on here, but you can see when the paint is fresh on the tip of this, you have a tendency to get those little line splatters. You don't really want that. Um, you want this to kind of look like just speckled. And then just lightly flick it right at the side of your bait. I have a cat that's going into a sneezing fit out there. He's the reason you guys see every once in a while a little piece of fur is going to float across the screen when I'm doing the workshop updates. I keep this place as immaculate as possible um, for having a small petting zoo here at the house, but it is a house full of rescued animals. So there's, I, I, I make sure that I QC everything and it's all quality control checked. Um, but occasionally at the finishing desk after I have the clear coat on, one or two will float into the screen <laughs> and you guys will see it on the occasional bait so that stuff is not going on to the unfinished bait by any means so again we're just loading the tip I have just a few drops of opaque black in the bottom of this and try and get this a little bit further out of the way Chewbacca is a long fur hence the name because when he was a kitten, he looked like a Wookiee. I do like Star Wars. And he's earned his name. He talks, chuffs, barks like a dog, chases and retrieves, which is interesting. And um, he drinks water with his paws. So, pretty cool cat for a cat. I do like him. Um, I like my labs, too. Don't get me wrong. I love all the critters. There we go. A little bit more. We've got that random flick. Now you, there's a couple of ways that you guys can go with this. If you want, you can add shad dots to these and that's going to look killer as well. Usually for my Potomac punches, I leave the shad dot off and I give that more of a minnow type look or a green sunfish. I don't put an ear flap on it or anything. I, I, I pretty much let the bait and the red speak for this bait. We're going to flip these around and I'll tell you putting that putting down that brown you can really see that gold pearl in it which is pretty cool. Um, it does have a tendency to shimmer and remember we used a pearlescent base. A lot of times when you use a pearlescent base instead of an opaque white base you're going to you're going to get that pearlescence to pull up through your transparent baits and that's a really good thing especially if you're in dirty water because it's really going to add that shimmer and pop to the bait. So just a little helpful tip to remember. That's probably too much. I didn't unload some of that. And then just random flick, random flick all the way around the bait 
on the sides. We'll come back and do the heads and the bellies all at the same time. But I need to do the sides while the helping hands are staggered. Stagger that just a little bit more. There we go. Now the other request that I got from similar uh, similar region, somebody was asking to paint some colors that would be really good for stripers and large mouth and small mouth. So I've been thinking about something that would be one bait that would be multi-species in a pattern. And I, I probably am going to go with match the hatch there or maybe do a juvenile striper pattern simply because you want something that every fish in the upper Susquehanna or lower Susquehanna rather um, can key in on. So there's a, there's a lot of upper bay fish is I think the phrase I was looking for and patterns that a, a lot of the species will eat. Actually, I like these bigger splatter patterns. I might come back around on this side real quick and get a couple of more larger splatters in while I've got a little bit more paint loaded on here because that does look pretty cool. We don't want to overdo it because you don't want to lose the integrity of the colors on your bait. But hey, just want one big one. It's not going to happen for me, is it? Okay. Just add in. Straighten these out so that we can run these in a line and finish the backs and the bellies. There we go. Got all three together. And we're just about out of paint, which is not a bad thing. Might even want to put just a couple more drops of this opaque in here. Don't want too much. There we go. Get some of that off. And then just continue that splatter pattern on their back. And then again, there's a couple of different ways you guys could trick this out. You could make it a bloody bait and flick red paint at it. Since this is an order for a customer, I'm not going to do that because they did not request it. But that would be, uh, that would probably enhance the wounded look on the bottom of this bait. But I do love, and I don't want to overdo, I want to make sure the red stays pretty prominent on the belly because that's the whole point of it being there. Probably get some snake head off of this pattern as well if that's what you guys are targeting. Just a little bit on the belly and then we're going to add silver eyes to this. I want to try and keep it as normal as possible since this is more a minnow like pattern get that excess out and then we'll put this under some cold water. That's the beauty of water-based paints. Um, I don't like to reduce with water ever ever because it's there's too many chemicals in the paints for it to work well. It kind of has it'll get cottage cheesy on you if you use water. Um, use the stuff that's intended for it. Um, there's other formulas out there but I just simple it's effective. The, the reducers that are out there on the market are pretty good and that's what they're intended for. So, no muss, no fuss. Let's get a heat set on this and we'll come right back and put those eyes on. One of the things that I think that I'm deciding to do here is to not have a traditional silver eye. Um, I want to add just a little bit of red into it. So I think what we're going to go with here is A silver eye that's got a red ring around the edge of it. And these eyes, I've got eyes from all over. 
I think black would probably get lost in this since we have this black accented right here. Um, but these, these should work out pretty nice. And I don't know how, how close I can get you guys in to see that, but if you guys can see this, see how that there's a, the inner silver ring and an exterior red, I think that's really going to finish this bait nicely. So we're going to add on, wow, that's, huh, okay. I hope this doesn't come flying out of here. With any luck, it will not. Eh, a little more than we want, but... There we go. It's a little bit better. You always want to look for the pointed part of the pupil. That is a bit much. That is a little bit much there. Get that out. Get it off the bill. Probably should have pulled the masking tape off of this first. What was I thinking? Because I don't want that masking tape to get stuck on here now that I've got the... Yeah, let's pull that off. Hindsight. It's still 2020 after all these years. But I think as long as we have that Loctite wet. It should be okay. Flip it over to the other side. I um, I got a, a little clog issue on this bottle of Loctite. And it doesn't have to be Loctite. I found that Loctite works a little bit better than Gorilla Glue. For some reason, KBS and Gorilla Glue really have a funky reaction to one another. Um, but the Loctite seems to be pretty good, so that's just my observation, and perhaps it's, there were other factors in there that I didn't really understand, but yeah, I, I really like that. I think that's going to be our finisher. See if I can get some smaller dabs of the super glue on. Oh, it's still, yeah, so anyways, I had some clog issues, and I had to cut the tip off of the bottle, which I hate to do, um, because you get the problem that I'm having now, where it just rushes out like Niagara Falls, and the glue ends up all over me. Yeah, that looks sharp. That's going to do well. And how about if I just follow my own advice and maybe on the third one I can remember to take the tape off. You know, it's Christmas. I got a lot on my mind. There's a lot of stuff going on here in the shop and a lot of stuff with family. So please forgive my scatterbrained thought process here this morning with you guys. I'm sure you've had similar situations. And if you haven't, good on you. But let's get this off before... <laughs> before we try and put some super glue on that. There you go, Jen. Much better. And this stuff, it dries pretty quick, so usually within 30 seconds I can touch it and not have any issues with it transferring or sticking or pulling whatever it is that I just glued on back off the bait. Just go ahead and finish that up. Get that eye on there. Come on there, a little bait. There we go. And two more. And then we'll get the signature on while that's drying. And again, always find the, the pointy part of the eye because fish eyes, their pupils, do have that point to them and point them this way. Point them towards the nose because that's how God made them. There we go. That's it. There is your Potomac Punch. A fairly simple, extremely effective bait for stained water. 
it's dark enough to be a profile bait in, in muddy water. Um, it's subtle enough to be a match the hatch bait over top of grass when they're sitting in it in the springtime. And uh, it's just, just an all around cool bait. And uh, you don't have to use this obviously on the Potomac. This is gonna work a bunch of other places as well. Um, but again, the, 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 the elements that make this what it is definitely are these three little red bull's eyes on the belly. It almost looks like it's a fish coming off of post spawn or coming off of the spawn. But yeah, I like, I like the, the red trim on that eye. Now let's get to signing it. It's a Uniball Vision Elite. Micro point. I think it's a point five. And I have had some questions as to, hey, I'm having a hard time. Um, don't, again, I, I can I'll always say this to you guys. Don't come at it straight on. Angle your tip when you're signing it has a tendency to roll off of the ball better onto your paint. And there you go. It's a great signing pen. And it's, uh, it's waterproof, dries fast. There's other stuff out there that works pretty well too. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is your Potomac Punch. We're gonna throw it in some KBS and let it dry. I'm gonna show you this at the end of the bait. Probably gonna have a couple more videos out before Christmas. It is Saturday, Christmas is on Tuesday, y'all. Um, in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. I always appreciate you guys, it's great company. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below underneath the description. And uh, if you don't catch any more of my videos between now and then, please have a blessed and Merry Christmas. A Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. Actually, I think Hanukkah's ended. Um, but anyways, tis the spirit and the, the spirit of the holidays and the seasons. May they be with you all, keep you safe, and uh, God bless our troops. Y'all take care.